Привет, ребята! Как дела, g'day guys, how's it going? We're jumping into another Soviet Lens review. It's been a while, but I thought we'd kick back off with a bit of a banger. Uh, this lens sitting on the Nikon Z6 right now is the Zenitar ME1. And it has a very unique feature, which you might be able to pick from the background. It does, of course, have a square aperture and that's not all it is in fact one of the sharpest one of the best soviet lenses i have ever used definitely one to look out for so without any further ado i reckon we should jump into it let's take a look at some photos let's take a look at how this lens performs and uh, well let's find out if you should buy it all righty guys let's take a look at the lens here we've got it just out it does not have the adapter on it typically i do uh, put the M42 to Nikon Z adapter on it, but here we go. This is the Zenitar ME1. Of course, manufactured there. You can see the uh, the factory logo of KMZ Krasnogorsk Mechanikski Zavod. KMZ was one of the best plants in the Soviet Union. MSC Zenitar ME1. Of course, the MC standing there for multi coated. And here we can see as well the year of production uh, that we can tell from the serial number. So with Soviet lenses, the year of production is always going to be the first two digits from the serial number, uh, unless there are some, uh, some kind of experimental lenses that might have zero, zero there instead. But there you go, and we can see if we uh, turn this lens, it does have a manual slash auto uh, dial there. So M means, M is basically what you want it to be set to on any modern camera because uh, the auto aperture is for uh, the original uh, sort of camera body that it was made for, I think, one of the Zenitar bodies, um, and that doesn't work on modern cameras. So just leave it in M, and that will mean that your aperture will uh, freely, freely turn. And just like that, we can see the square aperture. And you might be able to notice as well that when this lens is at 1.7, it does go fully circular. So if you're feeling like you don't actually want the square bokeh in a shot, then just pop it up there to uh, 1.7 and you're gonna get perfectly circular aperture and perfectly circular bokeh. And then we can see that about 2.8 is when it actually gets, uh, when it actually gets square. Righty guys, we're going to shoot this pizza oven now, do a bit of a sharpness test. We're sitting at 1.7 right now, and as you can tell, you know, it's pretty sharp in the center, and a little bit of uh, kind of drop off towards the edges, but let's drop it down to 2.7, oh, sorry, 2.8 rather. Okay, so we're sitting at around about f2.8, and you can tell that the edge sharpness has increased somewhat. Uh, it's still not perfect, but again, in the center, you know, you're really going to struggle to uh, um, to get too much sharper than this. Then we're going to drop it to, this is around about f10, f11, thereabouts, and we can see that the corner sharpness is pretty well perfect at the moment. It's sharp completely across the frame, and it's obvious that, like with many lenses, if you want to get the most out of the Zenitar ME1 in terms of sharpness across the entire frame, shoot it at f11. Okay guys, here we are going to take a look at a few photos and videos coming out from the lens. First off, we've got this kookaburra in the backyard here and as you can see, the just colours, the tones, the bokeh on this, it is a fantastic example of what the Zenitar can do. Got a few more photos of him as well and uh, you can just see the square aperture, it really doesn't distract from the frame. It adds to it. It adds a little bit of interest into lots of these photos. We've got some shots of uh, the Cho skin tones, a few portraits that I uh, I whipped up and you can see the skin tones coming out of this lens, not too red. Uh, they're quite natural and that's a characteristic of a lot of older Soviet lenses. But of course the square aperture again, you know, it wasn't just a design choice. You know, the, the, the Soviets didn't build this lens thinking, okay, let's get square bokeh into a lens. They made the aperture square because it was cheaper, <laughs> basically, uh, because it was a design optimization. The square aperture only has two blades, and that means that it's 
you know, cheaper and easier to produce than, uh, say, a Helios with nine or 11 blades or 13 blades. And the other benefit of having this square aperture is actually that a square aperture is one of the most optimal formulas uh, optically all throughout the background is very uniform. Unlike a lot of circular lenses where, you know, you might get the cat eye bokeh, you might get the uh, the circles kind of starting to turn into ovals towards the, the very edges of the frame on full frame. You do not get that with the Zenitar and that is undoubtedly uh, in part due to that square aperture. But there you go. I think we've proven here that the Zenitar anyone, one of the best Soviet lenses ever made, definitely worth picking it up if you're interested in manual photography if you just want you know to give your photos a different look a really cool look and have the opportunity to shoot a 50 mil f1.7 that's sharp you know fast and uh, really holds up to the test of time thanks guys